Hey community, today I'm starting a new series. This series is on client scripts or what some of you will call uh, custom scripts. And I want to give credit to Siva. He's the one who has uh, enabled this uh, series to happen. So hats off to you, Siva, wherever you are. Your uh, topics are now starting to come. So I have broken this series into a number of uh, uh, videos because this is, this is going to be a long one. Uh, if I do it in one video, it's going to be a very long video. So I figured out it's important to break it so that the concepts sink in with every learner. So we are going to dive in straight, straight away. So I have two points here to explain what are client scripts. And you can see here, there is a name. The first thing here, there's a name client that is repeated because the point says that it is code which is executed on the client script. So what is this client that you keep repeating? Now, in modern software, there is normally two sides of, uh, of it or of them, especially the mobile and the web apl applications. The first one is the server script uh, or the server side, sorry, and the other one is the client side. So the server side is what is uh, called in another name, the backend side. And the client script is what is called the frontend side. So when we talk about client side, we mean the front-end side. And in our case here in ERP Next, we have client side being the browser. So what happens in these scripts is that they are run on the browser. So every time you call it or every time or every code that you are going to be writing here is going to be executed on the browser. So what we are going to be doing here is we are going to be writing code that is going to be run on the browser so you can see the second me the second point here the code that you're going to be writing is going to run on the browser now the two sides that i told you about earlier the server side and the uh the client side or the back end side and the front end side when you write code for instance in python in era Pinex, for instance or in frappe they use python the python code is run on the server and then we have the client side where they are using javascript and that is why you're going to find that the client scripts you're going to be writing are going to be on JavaScript. So the reason why we are using JavaScript is because that is the uh, front-end technology that ERP Next and Frappe are using. So if you are on Mac and you have Safari as your browser, the code is going to, run on, to be run or to be executed by your Safari. If you're using Chrome or Firefox or any other browser, that is the uh, uh, application that is going to be executed, executing every code that you are going to be learning how to write in this series. So, how do we create the client or the uh, yeah the client uh, scripts? And we are going to be seeing that. So, here let me just go back home so that we can start. I have spinned up a new environment and I have installed one custom application here called Frappe Training. So this is where we're going to be doing all this. So when you are here on the home page, you can go to client script. And that is where you're going to be writing your client scripts. So this is where you create it. So if I click on this, the first thing that I'm supposed to provide here is the doc type. Where do we want to run our client scripts? And here I have sales invoice open. I want us to run or to add our script on the sales invoice for today. So if I click on this, let me connect my computer there. If I click on that, I want to add a button here. So that tells you that the first topic that we are going to run, because that was basically an, an introduction, is how to add buttons in server or in uh, uh, our uh, using our client scripts. How do we add a button? We are going to be doing three things in buttons. We are going to add a button outside here. Then we are going to be adding that button inside a group. Then we are going to be adding that button inside any of these buttons that have already been created by ERP Next. And then the last thing we are going to do is to rename a button that exists here. So let's go ahead and do that. One is to create a button out here, outside here. So remember, this is a sales invoice. So we are going to provide a sales invoice here. And then this is a formal list. What we mean here is where do you want this script to be ran? We have two options. The form is this. When you are inside a sales invoice or any other document, the list is when you are outside any of these. So if you're here, you want a script that runs here, then you're going to select a list here. 
if you want a form you're going to select a form there that is going to run inside this form all right then the next thing is a checkbox that says enabled of course if it is checked it means this script will run if it is not checked this script will not run all right let's go so we check it we want it to run here of course this is in, in uh, this is just initializing the script uh, and then inside here is where we are going to be putting uh, our 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 scripts so we have the first thing here which reads refresh by default refresh is an event at what point do you want the script to be called refresh means when i refresh my browser like that call my script so that is fine with us today in later videos we are going to be looking at things like on load things like uh, maybe on load before what 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 and all those and we can also put them inside uh, uh fields here such that when a field is changed i want something to happen to or i want my script to be called so currently on refresh will work then how do we add a button i have two uh links here and they are on the description section from their documentation the first one is uh on client scripts you can read that the other one is about creating buttons because remember this is a first topic how do we create a button using a client script so i'm just going to copy this the first code there and then i'm going to paste it inside here then i will explain to you what this code means so let me just push this oh sorry let me just push this a little bit inside like that so that our code looks clean then here we're going to add something so the first thing here is button name what do you want to call your button so we can just call it button one that's fine here we have a group we don't want a group for now so i'm just going to remove that then here we can have something like console.log or whatever so we can console log something like this is a, this is a click all right then save it that's it we have added a button when we refresh or if we refresh this invoice we are going to see a button here called button one let's try and see refresh and here we have button one and we told it to log something so if i go to console and clear and click on button one it logs this is a click so our button is there and actually working step one is done how do we add this button inside a group and that is what we had here the thing i removed here this group name is what contains the group of those invoices uh, i mean of those buttons so i can call this something like my buttons and then i can save it if i come here now refresh here i will still have my button but now it is under my buttons when you open that's why we have button one this enables you to add multiple other buttons so for instance if i wanted a button two i just need to copy this code paste it down here and then change this to button two like that save it if i refresh now here i have button one and button two perfect second thing done the other thing is how do we add this button one inside our create button here the create button that was done by erp next that's crazy easy you see where we had we placed our uh, our button one and a group called my buttons we just need to change that to create so the create means it is the create that here next have here so if i now refresh the my buttons at the head here disappears and inside create i have my button one and by the way if i check the console here and i click button one it still works it has this is a click there the third step done the fourth step is how do we rename a button like payment so that it reads something like payment uh payment to something else so here i'm going to rename this to maybe something like payment to abc and then i'm going to rename the other one to something like payment to uh something else i don't know so there is some piece of code that i'm going to copy and then i'm just going to explain that code to you because i had already prepared it so after refresh let me just put it here all right uh, let me just create some space there so this is the code we have here the first thing is a variable bt which contains your button so this is where you want your button to go the, if you want to rename multiple buttons you can add uh, another button here that is on your invoice here here i can add payment i can add delivery i can add dunning i can add all of them there 
and then that is a variable you have created with an array or a list of those buttons then here we have a function or a, a for each uh, loop that we are doing and what this does is you can see we are calling a function called remove in a button this remove in a button removes any buttons that is on here so you can see we are looping through bt dot for each function then bt then form page removing a button from create all right so this removes all the buttons that you have there and the reason why i did just did that for each is to just so that you may know even if you have one button here or you have two or three or even ten this is going to remove all the buttons and then from there we are going to be recreating the same button. Let me call this payment to X, Y, Z. Something like payment to X, Y, Z, all right? Something like that. So what is going to happen is here, we are calling the add in a button now. So remember here we had the remove in a button, which removes our button. Then here we have add in a button payment to X, Y, Z, which calls this payment. The reason we are calling this is because we want it to do the same thing that our payment button was doing so we have these events we are going to be maybe talking about those later in later videos which uh tells you exactly which event each and every button calls so the payment button here in erp next calls a function called make payment entry so if we save this and you go to our invoice and reload our invoice remember this is javascript so you have to reload it to work if you open this you can see here now we have payment to ABC, payment to XYZ. If you click payment to XYZ, this opens a payment entry, just like it was opening on the payment uh, on the payment uh, button. So that is why I want us to end to this video to end to this video. In the next video we are going to be looking at filters uh, and 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 of course other topics we can look at here. We can decide whether it is filters, it is dialogues, it is what we are going to be deciding that so if you have not already subscribed to this youtube channel make sure you subscribe so that you don't lose miss those videos because like i said i'm going to be breaking it into small videos so subscribe so that every video released you get a notification and you can follow along and watch it thank you so much and see you in that other amazing video